I was visiting with the, the mayor of Winslow a few months back. We were talking about a project that was proposed in Winslow to bring a press board plant. You may have heard about this plant that they wanted to bring into Winslow. If any of you have been to Winslow lately, it's, it's, it's awful. This is a city in, in despair and desperation. And so there was an opportunity to bring a press board plant. It was a private sector job, private sector industry, and he was going to, the gentleman who was proposing this was going to use small growth timber cleared from the forest, also through a private company, to provide him with the raw material to do the press board. And to me, just a, as a stupid capitalist, I thought, wow, what a great idea. Here's a private company that's gonna clear the forest and use that material to provide to another private company that's gonna create press board and create jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Wow, what a concept. Well, enter the forest service. Well, we have to do a study. We have to look at the impact of this. And believe me, I'm all about responsible forest management. Absolutely, we have to be responsible for it. But not doing anything is not responsible. And I live in Shoal, and if you look at the difference in the forest as you're driving from Shoal from the National Forest to the Indian Reservation, it is a glaring difference. The Indian tribe has the ability to clear their forest and to maintain a healthy forest. And if you look through it, it's beautiful. It aesthetically, it looks beautiful. Compare that to our national forest, and it's just all tangled up in regulations and lawsuits and everything else. That's not helping the environment. That's not helping the ecology. We need to get again back to the people who do this, to the foresters, to the ranchers, to the miners. They know how to do these things, certainly better than I. I don't know where to graze cows or sheep, and I'll, I'll talk to Rusty, say, hey, where, where, where do we take the sheep? <laughs> but we need to go to the people. I wouldn't expect him to tell me how to do heart surgery either. <laughs> the fact is, we have to go to the people who do this. We don't want to foul our water. We don't want to foul our air. We want beautiful vistas to look upon. We don't need the East Coast. We don't need Washington. We don't need legislators and bureaucrats coming in telling us how to take care of our land. I think in, in this district, it goes without saying that we have to be sensitive uh, to the environment for many reasons. Um, especially in our region, tourism. Um, the Mecca here, Sedona, and everything kind of comes off of that. So I, I think anybody has to be back environmentally sensitive. But I think what we need to talk about is, I'm a, I'm a little bit different type of Republican than you've seen. Uh, elections, you know, are, are where things at. And we kind of get caught up in, in our issues. But as you can see, elections decide who gets the issues. And I'm an Al, anybody remember Al Davis? Just win, baby? You, you gotta put somebody in there that is electable. Sydney just talked about it. You know, they had a big, you know, picture of me with a, you know, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with truth, but but she was framed. And, and our friends over there, they're not even our friends anymore. Let's talk about their godless humanists. They are very good. They Amen. They specialize in framing the debate. And what we have to start doing is we have to start, not, not so much, and I'm not saying issues are not important, but I'm saying we, we gotta send, start sending people that cannot be framed, people that are electable. I think particularly this cycle, somebody that doesn't have any political experience, a father of five from a small town in your district, I think that's winnable in November. When you start getting into very complex situations, that reverts to their ball game, the game of framing, whether it's true or untrue, they're gonna probably have a $2 million war trust to put on a frame. And they're gonna frame it whichever way they have. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm no Boy Scout. <laughs> but I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think we can send Boy Scouts anymore. I think you gotta send somebody that's serious about doing a job, not a career, a job. And that's to reduce the size and scope of the federal government. Ojoforreform.com. Are we to set on time? Can anybody come? <laughs> it comes down as an economist. I look at numbers. It's real easy for me to see the numbers. Cap and trade. No one's mentioned that. Cap and trade will crush manufacturing in this country. And if you're an environmentalist, which I am, I'm a good husband. I hunt. I fish. When we do crush just oppressive regulation like that, it sends jobs to China. They are bad husbands of their environment. They dump raw sewage and heavy metals in their rivers. The military closed Beijing for one year prior to the Olympics. 
it was still the filthiest, dirtiest city on the planet. Good job, environmentalists. Everyone's right here. It's a radical agenda to control your life. They are godless humans. And these are the same people that worry about some bug but think it's right to kill 55 million babies in this country. It's the same kind of diseased logic called liberalism. I live in Sedona by choice. I love to irritate them with facts, reason, and logic. It comes down to simple economics. We must, everyone here is a father, or excuse me, a mom too. <laughs> I've got a 